Well, I hope you're all having a good Thanksgiving. We're going to take a look at Ghostbusters Afterlife, directed by Jason Reitman. Former Ghostbuster Egon Spangler has passed away under possibly mysterious circumstances, and his estranged family has inherited his farm out in the middle of nowhere. It seems his daughter would rather just burn the farm down and forget her father ever existed, since they didn't really have much of a relationship, but they're flat broke and need a place to live. His grandkids, however, stumble across Ecto-1 and his old equipment and start to wonder just what in the hell was that crazy old man up to? And pretty soon they find out there is something strange in the neighborhood and, well, you know the rest. I did have some concerns going in as the trailer for this movie made it seem like they were going for more of a Stranger Things vibe. And I like Stranger Things, but... Stranger Things is not Ghostbusters. I can now tell you that the trailer was misleading as hell. Tonally, this is actually pretty close to the original. And overall, I actually thought this was pretty good. I have some issues, there are a few things I wish it had done differently, but it was fine. For the most part, had a pretty good balance between the silly and the scary. And because the Ghostbusters are kids this time around, it kind of felt like a cross between Ghostbusters and the Goonies. A lot of time has passed since Ghostbusters 2, both in the movie and in real life, and for the most part I thought the story did a pretty good job explaining just how in the hell Egon came to own this farm in the middle of nowhere, and how he separated from his fellow Ghostbusters and his family. Egon's grandkids, Trevor and Phoebe, are played respectively by Finn Wolfhard and McKenna Grace, and I thought they did very well. They feel like real siblings which is, for some reason, very hard to do. I don't understand why it's so hard, but so many writers seem to struggle with that. Phoebe is definitely the quirky one of the family. Uh, felt like she was basically doing her best young Sheldon impression, but it kind of worked, and I did enjoy her terrible jokes. Why can you never trust an atom? Because they make up everything! <laughs> And despite being in the middle of nowhere, they managed to make some friends. A girl named Lucky, played by Celeste O'Connor, and a boy named Podcast, or at least that's the name he goes by, played by Logan Kim. He's called Podcast because he has a podcast. He's not terribly creative. And I love how Lucky is just constantly messing with Trevor throughout the movie. She was a lot of fun. Paul Rudd plays a summer school teacher by the name of Gary Gruberson, who kind of becomes a mentor to the new Ghostbusters. And man, if your name is Gary Gruberson, you were definitely born under a bad sign. And somehow that man has still not aged. What the hell is he doing? They did a very touching tribute to Harold Ramis towards the end of the movie. It was a great, I'm not crying, you're crying moment. And they snuck in a few cameos, and you saw some of them in the trailer, I'm sure, and there might be a few more? There were a few things that didn't work for me all that well. There's a scene where Gary visits a Walmart, and somehow this Walmart has like three people in it, and even if you're in a small town in the middle of nowhere, there's no way you're gonna find an empty Walmart. That's just not a thing. But anyway, when he visits this Walmart, the marshmallows on the store shelves all start coming to life and turning into these little mini Stay Puffed Marshmallow Men. And while the scene was kind of funny, and it was a neat little callback to the original, it made absolutely no sense in the context of the movie. Fan service is all well and good, but fan service should not be a substitute for good writing. There's also a point about halfway through the movie where a certain character is introduced, and it seems like this character is going to be a huge deal later on. That does not happen. By the time we hit the climax, that character is just gone. And he's played by a very well-known actor, too, which makes me wonder if this was always the plan or if something changed at the last minute. In either case, it seemed like such a waste. And I have another problem, and I can't really get into it without talking about spoilers. So here is your warning. If you don't want the spoilers, click mute until this is gone. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so, Gozer is back. What? And played by Olivia Wilde, of all people. And she looked great. I didn't even recognize her at first. And again, fan service should not be a substitute for good writing. I really wish they had come up with something new, and instead they pulled a Return of the Jedi. And it's not just Gozer. They also rehashed the whole gatekeeper, keymaster thing with Gary and... 
Callie Spangler, Egon's daughter, who's played by Carrie Coon. There is no mom, there is only Zul, etc, etc. Callie even puts on the exact same dress Sigourney Weaver was wearing in the original because fuck it. And the story was really going great up until the point where we got to Gozer and the Gatekeeper and the Keymaster and the little mini Marshmallow Man. It felt fresh and interesting and still felt like Ghostbusters. And then they just ran out of ideas. Also, as long as we're into spoiler talk, that character I was referring to earlier is played by J.K. Simmons. Why would you waste J.K. Simmons? I think he has like one line of dialogue. Basically, he's the founder of this small town that they're in, and his body was somehow preserved, and when Gozer comes back to life, so does he. And he's like, I am ready to serve you, my queen. And Gozer's just like, nah, <laughs> rips him in half. Why? But like I said earlier, the movie is perfectly fine. There was definitely room for improvement, but I still enjoyed it. It still felt like a Ghostbusters movie. It's fine. If you're a fan of the franchise, I do recommend checking it out. It's not as good as the original, and I think at this point we just need to accept that we will never hit that point again. But it's decent and at least worth a matinee. And that's all I have to say about Ghostbusters Afterlife. Till next time, take care.